My broad area of research has always been uh, sort of trying to understand what the impact of immigration is on labor markets. Uh, basically, I want to find out in, I want to find out how labor markets work. And immigration these days is uh, a sufficiently large issue in many countries, and the number of immigrants are sufficiently large in many countries that you can actually use the immigration sort of experiment to sort of detect and track how labor markets are responding to the entry of immigrants. And, you know, there are many things that could happen as immigrants come into the country, right? On the one hand, immigrants are, are bringing things with them that the labor market might lack. So you might think that it could be quite good for the, for the, for the, end, for the, for the labor market that's receiving the immigrants when the immigrants are bringing things that are not available otherwise. At the same time, immigrants are bringing things in that the labor market already has. So in a sense, in the short run, it's creating a sort of a surplus of certain kinds of individuals or workers. And that might be not so helpful for the people who are offering the same services. So you sort of get this kind of, um, this kind of conflict uh, in trying to understand what the impact of immigration is. Some people are going to benefit, some people might not benefit. And it's sort of interesting to sort of see that play out in the labor market and see which of these two effects tends to sort of dominate in the longer term. You know, whether or, or what happens as, these, as the economy basically adjusts to the immigrants, so things go back to the way they used to be, or are there more permanent long run term impacts? I think, uh, I think the main lesson that, that we've learned from migration research is that, you know, like everything on the, else under the sun, and it, immigration is not great for everybody, and it's not terrible for everybody. Some people tend to benefit dramatically, and some people tend to lose, and some people tend to lose a lot. The, peop the way I see it, I and mean, the way I sort of see what the division of the benefits and costs are, is that people who tend to use immigrants uh, tend to benefit a lot. And the people who tend to use immigrants are people like employers who are going to hire labor, and it's always good for an employer, from an employer's point of view, it's always good for an employer to have a lot of workers to choose from. Because that way he can you know, pay lower wages than he, that, than he would otherwise. And it's also good for consumers. Because some of, those, you know, some of the stuff immigrants produce will eventually be sold. And because immigrants are producing at lower wages and the wage in those industries goes down, the product might actually become cheaper. So if you, like in Southern California, for example, there's a lot of low-skilled immigrants, it's actually very cheap for a consumer to buy someone to take care of the house or to mow the lawn or do things like that. Uh, at the same time, it, you know, if you are importing a lot of programmers, it's cheaper for people who consume software to, to buy software produced by immigrants because it's much cheaper to produce. So those are the, those are the winners, I think, uh, from immigration. At the same time, the people who already were there producing the services have a lot more people to compete with in the production of those services. So that just makes the labor market much, much more slack in the sense that there's just a lot more people competing for the same kinds of jobs. And that tends to create a group of losers. And um, I think one of the things that one has to worry about is how do you design an immigration policy that takes care of Trying to um, trying to gain trying to uh, trying to attract the gains that immigrants can provide to the country, while at the same time remi remembering that there are people being left behind by that, and a lot of the political conflict I think has to do with that sort of tension. One of the questions that really could be quite quite important in the Luxembourg context, because Luxembourg, as I understand it, gets a lot of very high skilled immigrants. And we know for a number of reasons that high skill immigration can provide substantial benefits to a country. And you can just imagine why there are so many possibilities from that to arise. One possibility is that high skill immigrants bring knowledge in that could, for example, spill over to other people in the country, right? They bring, they bring information in that could really be, could just expand the, 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 the knowledge frontier dramatically. And everybody gains as a result of that. In the Luxembourg case, given that high school immigration and the importation of you know, a lot of high school labor uh, 
has that possibility makes it really crucial to understand how those spillovers are actually get transferred. In other words, what set of conditions uh, would be the ones that are most amenable to allow high school immigration to have these beneficial spillovers that make everybody wealthier? Because if that were possible, a country like Luxembourg could really drain really uh, dramatically as a result of this kind of, uh, of immigration. Just sort of trying to design the, the kind of immigration you want and how, how exactly do you allow for the spillovers to be transferred to their native population, I think. That would be one of the topics that I would, that I would really focus on in the context of Luxembourg. Uh, I think that one mistake that scholars often make when they study immigration is that they tend to study it from a policy perspective. In other words, they start with a policy issue and then study it that way. And that framing of the issue could be problematic just because the, the, the immigration debate is so politicized that by sort of looking at it from a policy perspective, you sort of tend to frame the question in a way that can influence the answer. I think a much better, a much better way of approaching these questions is to start from a, from a purely economic perspective. In other words, what is, what is it that economics teaches us about the impact of immigration, either low-skill immigration or high-skill immigration, and then go from the economics of it to try to understand what's going on, rather than going from the policy aspect of it to try to understand what's going on. By focusing much more on the economic side of things, I think you get a much more uh, impartial framing of the question that leads to a fuller and more truthful understanding of what's really going on, that if you place it in the context of a policy that is incredibly politicized and very polarizing. <laughs>